Miniature Realms is proudly sponsored by Income Gaming, Cheltenham's premier friendly local game store. Check the link in the description. With Dwarven Mountain holds on the way for Warhammer the Old World soon, hopefully not too long weeks rather than months, but we know they're on the way, I decided to start my first Dwarven army for quite a number of years. Now I recently picked up this sealed set of 6th edition multi-part plastic warriors back from 2001. They're not everyone's favourite sculpt but I've always been a fan of these and while technically the, the later plastics for sort of the end of 6th edition, early 7th edition and then the 8th edition plastics may be a little bit more modern and a little bit better proportioned, I've got a, a lot of affection for these old sculpts and thought they'd be really fun to add to the army now you get 16 in one of these sets i managed to pick up a few extras as well and the plan for them is to make a unit of quarrelers but then also to make a unit of rangers and that's what this video is going to be about Welcome to Miniature Realms, my name is Stuart and in this video I'm going to show you how I paint my Dwarf Rangers. I'm going to assume that you're new to the channel so regular viewers will have to forgive me for any repetition or things that you're used to hearing all the time. The miniature has been primed black and then a white coat has been applied over the top using an airbrush, mostly top down, zenithal style. The idea is to leave some black in the shaded areas underneath so if I held the miniature upside down you see quite a lot of black. I'm also adding a dry brush here as well just to pick out that extra detail a la slap chop a little bit. And the idea there is to create a perfect base layer for any kind of glazes that I put on for my base layers. What I like to do is base coat with contrast style paints be that contrast or army painter speed paint or Vallejo Express color and then that gives us a nice tabletop looking miniature and then what I do afterwards is highlight in a more traditional method so there's a bit of a jump off point in the tutorial for those of you who are looking just to create a more basic tabletop finish however using this method over this kind of pre-highlighted miniature does produce a very good standard of tabletop miniature and I think it's a good process. I'm going to start with the skin and we're using dwarf skin deep purple and gloomy violet all from Vallejo Express color you can obviously swap these out for close enough representations from the Citadel contrast range if that's what you have or other paint ranges but I'm here I'm applying the dwarf skin first to all of the skin areas and because you've got that nice kind of whitish grayish base what it does is it settles in the recesses but it really reinforces what's already there so if it's just a plain white miniature with no grayscale or shadow showing through you get a much flatter finish this you'll get a little bit more transition and gradient between the darker areas and the light which does some of that heavy lifting for you in terms of needing to do highlights later on Next up we're using Gloomy Violet and here I'm really reinforcing those shadows even more so I like to place this just in thin lines really around where the skin meets the clothing so here where the cuff of the sleeve meets the wrist and the same on the other side. I also like to place it around the edges of the face and into the shadows where the eye sockets are as well. After that, the deep purple, which has a much more reddish, warmer tone, I place a little bit further out, so this case on the hand, over the knuckles and in between the fingers, and it really adds a different tone to the skin. So you've got three tones built in just to the base color here, but these are all thin, just with a touch of water. So you're essentially glazing your way into a really nice multi-tone skin and finish already, and this is before we've even done any highlighting. Now to Citadel Contrast, a Kellyan Green, which is a very rich, vibrant, turquoise-ish colour, I would say. So there's a green tone to it, but there's plenty of blue in there as well. And I love the way this paint goes on. This is a really, really nice solid base that I need for the, the main clothing areas. It goes really nicely into the recesses, so it will give you a nice, deep, rich colour. But it's very smooth over the flatter surfaces as well which prevents it from streaking or, or, or pooling where you don't want it. There's not an awful lot of clothing to pick out, but I am going with a half shield design here. So I'm just using it to paint a thin line in first before filling in the other side. I find with most contrast paints that they 
you get an awful lot of control with them more than a thicker paint when you when you thin it and i find that they're fantastic for for being really neat with much neater than you think i think a lot of people the perception is they go like washes and they'll just run everywhere but it's so easy to do these detailed parts miniature realms is proudly sponsored by baron of dice premium wargaming dice over 500 styles over 4,000 customer reviews welcome to the best dice on the planet there are a number of browns on the miniature. The first up is Contrast Saigor Brown, which is a, a deeper brown with a, a reddish undertone to it. And I'm using this for a lot of the leather on the miniature. So quite a few in this unit have these little leather waistcoats, but they're also using it on their belts and their boots as well. This little chap has a little quiver for his arrows. In this area here, it didn't really matter too much if I did go over onto the, the chainmail because I'll be painting over with a metallic paint afterwards. But I am trying to be quite neat overall. The miniature is, is underpainted and I really want to get the effect of the underpainting. So I try to keep in the areas that I want it to, but I can touch up with a bit of white and a bit of gray paint if I do go over into an area that I want to be left clean for, for future paint layers. Now we are on to Contrast Garagaxu, which is one of my favourite paints and it is very much a regular on the channel, as many people have noticed. I'm using it here on some of the wooden areas, like the back of the shield, and I'm also using it on the top half of the quiver, so it's like an alternative leather colour. I'm also going to use it on the, the crossbow and on the leather wraps around his great axe here. For this little chap, I've decided to go for a nice, vibrant yellow blonde beard. So we've got Nasdrag yellow here, which is a very strong, rich yellow that has a very deep sort of ochre undertone to it. So in the recesses, it looks quite dark, which is exactly what you want for something like hair. But on the higher areas, it does look like a nice, bright yellow as well. So I really am a big fan of this colour. I use it an awful lot, probably the most used of the yellows. I like the, the darker contrast colours for base coating the most i find they give me the most versatility in terms of being able to highlight over the top because it gives me that darker shade already but in many cases like this where the detail is pretty good um, it almost does all the job you need without having to do much more Sticking with the contrast, we have some Skeleton Horde now, and I'm just using this for the extra parts on the crossbow. So we have the string and a little bit of sort of wrapping that is around the top. Now this is Thrash Metal from Scale Color or Scale 75. I don't use this quite as much as my, my regular go-to metallics, but I'm going to do a mix of different armor colors in my Dwarf Army, and I really wanted my Rangers to, to use a, a slightly different color to, to some of the others. So this is, is more of a sort of desaturated silver with almost warm tones to it, and almost like a tiny bit of gold or bronze has been mixed into it. And I'm just applying it straight on to the chainmail area is here to start but I'm also going to use it on the helmets and then on the the shafts of all the great axes as well the heads I'm going to use a different metallic color most of the miniatures have a chain mail leather jerkin on which covers most of their body and also their shoulders as well a few of them have the sort of leather banding or edging as you can see on this one so it's just worth sort of if you're painting the whole unit taking your time working your way around and making sure that uh, you're looking out for the slight differences in detail between each miniature of course you're thinking well these are sixth edition miniatures that, that hardly anyone can get hold of or there are lots of money on ebay or they're all badly painted and i don't even like these sculpts but those principles are, are the same for any of the newer sculpts as well or pretty much any dwarf sculpt of any manufacturer out there they'll have similar kinds of designs and and similar kinds of techniques will be needed i'm just finishing off the the helmet here doing the little side ear straps that are on there and now we're on to Necro Gold, also from the same scale colour range, scale 75. And just not much gold on these miniatures, a little bit there on the buckle. And then on this little chap here, he's got this little emblem on his quiver. Regular viewers will recognise this colour as one I use a lot. This is black metal from that same range, and I'm using this for the head of the Grey Tax. It's a bit of a deeper, more of a normalised steel kind of color uh, i think if you have any kind of gunmetal color in your paint range there will be a good substitution for this one if you don't already have it i'm going to use a little bit of oil wash here rather than a agrax earth shade but you could use something like that this is grease from scale works from scale color now i'm only using this on the metallics 
um, in small amounts it, it won't damage the miniature at all if you're going to cover the whole miniature in it it might work away some of the paints you might want to protect with a gloss varnish but these metallic paints are really robust i use them all the time so i definitely recommend them and they can handle a very light oil wash like i'm doing here the reason for oil wash over a standard agrax earth shade or something like that is they tend to run into the recesses a, a lot more when they dry they dry like a, a sort of a weathered or dirty area so not only do they shade but they, they make the metal look old and more realistic which is an effect i really really like um, and but you can also play around them a lot more they don't pool on the on the flat surfaces anywhere near as much and when they do you can just wipe it away even when they look surface dry you can use a little bit of artist white spirit and and that cleans off and you'll see that as the next stage and this is that artist white spirit here artist stuff just smells a little bit less toxic than the stuff you find in a diy store just adding a little bit here to an old paintbrush taking the excess off on some kitchen roll and then just wiping it over any of the areas where the oil paint has pulled or looks too dark and it just takes it back to the color it was before you want to make sure you don't do this too much and take away all the stuff you've painted on because it's been a waste of time leave it in the recesses but it just shades it really really nicely and there we are with a base coat so over that zenith or high note that underpainting or slap chop elements to it as well if you haven't seen it before you can get a really nice tabletop looking miniature i added the oil wash there just to show you what it would look like if we based it now he'd be ready for the table but we're going to go on and do lots more highlighting Sentient Turquoise, Curse Blue and Ray Gun Glow, all from Two Thin Coats. Now, this little triad works perfectly with the Akellan Green Contrast Paint. The darkest tone is very close to the darkest shade that you get with the Akellan Green and all those recesses, so I don't use it too much. So we're going with the mid-tone and the highlight tone most very very thin lines and what i'm doing here is i'm working over the top of the contrast paint where those highlights are already showing so the contrast paint is settled over the underpainted miniature forming into the recesses where it looks darker and at its lightest it looks a little bit thinner where the the tops of the folds in the in the clothing are for, for example all i'm doing here is going back in with that mid-tone and just basically tracing over those lines where those highlights are it's almost giving you an outline to work from and it's much much easier in my mind than working over a flat base color and once that first layer is done you can go in with the top highlight and using even thinner lines much shorter so you're still showing all the original tones as well and just add some extra highlights in onto the shield now and just using that mid tone and drawing a center line down first just like I did when I first painted it in with the contrast paint and I'm turning it upside down here because I want to make it lighter at the bottom and I find it easier to do upside down and what I'm going to do is just painting the bottom sort of third of the shield and start to feather it out add a little bit of water blend it out and then get the next layer the next color the mid-tone again and just blend it back in with a little bit of glazing so it's part glaze part wet blend and you end up with this really nice little transition and then just like i did with the clothing i'm going back in with that top layer and even thinner line and i'm using it a bit like an edge highlight so i'm reinforcing that center line first of all and then i'm just focusing on a thin line in a bottom third and around the edge of the blue on the shield moving on to layer phalanx yellow from citadel color i'm just doing the, the lightest lightest of dry brushes here just to pick out a little bit of the detail the contrast has already run into all the detail and, and and kind of giving you a natural highlight there anyway and the last thing i want to do is spend hours highlighting individual strands of the beard for the other half of the shield, I've opted for wide. Now, I might change this on the other units in the army, sticking with that kind of turquoisey blue as the main army colour and then and giving it an individual colour for all the others. I'm undecided yet. You'll have to watch the future tutorials to find out. But what I'm doing here is very much working the same way as I did with the blue, focusing on the bottom of the shield, adding water and, and feathering out until it blends into the top continuing to add very very thin layers of white until the transition is smooth enough this is only a, a rank and file trooper so i don't need to make it too too neat but i want to make it neat enough and then once that is dry i just glaze back with a little bit of, of gw apothecary white contrast paint which is essentially a, a bit of a gray glaze 
while I've got the whites on the palette, I'm just going to paint the eyes in now. And the reason I do that is if I mess up, um, at least I can fix that before I highlight the skin. If I do it the other way around, I've got a lot more work to fix. But before we highlight that skin, we're going to be working on the browns first. And here we have model color, whole red and pale brown. Now, at first, the whole red does look quite bright and quite vibrant. But once it's dry, the intensity of the redness in it seems to go down by about 50%. So don't be put off by that to start with. And we're using this over the Saigor brown. And this is the perfect sort of a complement to it, at least in my mind anyway. It goes over the, the edges really, really nicely. And you end up with this sort of nice transition once it once it dries so we're talking here on this miniature on the leather waistcoat we've got the belt we've also got the the sort of the edges to some of the mail like on the shirt here on his shoulders i'm using it to highlight the boots which are also base coated in that saigor brown just focusing on the edge of the boots so around the toes and the little raised area across the bridge of the foot and once we finish with that whole red, we're just moving on to that pale brown and really focusing as very, very thin edge highlights here, just on the bottoms of this leather waistcoat first off. Before moving on to the leather edges of the male shirt, finishing off with some final touches on those boots. Sticking with model colour, we have Flat Earth and Tan Earth, and these are fantastic as highlights for any areas you've painted with Garagak Sewer. So the Flat Earth first here, so I'm just going down the leather wraps on this great axe, and then on the back here of the crossbow. And then just like the, with the previous brown, this time it's the Tan Earth, an even thinner line just for those final edge highlights. For the crossbows, there's less edges, so I'm just focusing on where the light might be hitting, depending on the angle of the crossbow. Now moving on to Game Air Silver. First off, a little bit of dry brushing, and I'm focusing this on the top third of the axe where the light would hit. Then using a very small brush, I'm carefully over brushing the mail to pick out the detail, but I also want to make sure I don't get this metallic paint on any of the areas we've already finished and highlighted. I'm using this Game Air Silver to highlight both different colour metallics, be that the thrash metal or the black metal, which is on the, the head of the axe. Just a few little edge highlights here or there, using the edge of the brush to aid me. And at some points, it, it's quite hard to get an edge, so I'm just having to use a, a proper brush or a non-knackered brush to go in and, and paint some little fine edges here or there. So back to scale color metallics, which is the usual for me, and it's elven gold. And this is perfect for highlighting the necro gold that we used earlier on on the belt buckles and the odd little extra detail here and there. Don't forget that little emblem that's on the back of his quiver. Returning to the two thin coats paint range, we have Barbarian Brawn, Dwarven and Elven Skin. And this is a triad that I've recently picked up and really enjoying using it. And it works very well with the, the sort of the contrast style base layer over that underpainted method. And what you've got here is quite a dark looking skin already, but there is already highlight built in because of the underpainting that we did. And I'm trying to make it a little bit more vibrant here. It very much works as it is for a, a tabletop miniature. But I'm just going back in with the dark darkest shade here and just sort of slowly building up layers as if you would do with normal traditional painting here the difference being you, you've got a really really kind of detailed and, and strong base to work from I'm just working at each skin color layer by layer leaving some of the previous color showing behind so we're now onto the dwarven skin and I'm just focusing into some thinner lines here on the, the knuckles and on the tops of the hands Continuing the method onto the face. I'm just trying to be really subtle here. We're still on the Dwarven skin at the moment. It just works really well over the, the initial underpainted miniature and the Dwarf skin um, express color paint from Vallejo. I'm just kind of using the, the, the highlights that are already there as I did earlier on with the clothing, just to kind of use as my guidelines and my, my lines to build up on. If your paints are thin enough, you can keep the existing color there, but while reaping the benefits of uh, reinforcing it. And then as we get onto that elven skin, I'm not doing too much at all here. I'm just very much doing dots on the, on the knuckles, on, on the hands here. And as we get onto the face again, it'll just be little lines across the tops of the cheekbones, right on the top of the nose, and, and trying not to obliterate what you've already done. 
Something else that's really cool to do is go back and glaze over the skin afterwards. So returning to the deep purple here, I'm just going over the nose and then a little bit onto the cheeks and it just reddens it up nicely. It makes you a little, little bit cartoon-esque. But you know, let's face it, these dwarves love their Bugman's Forex and uh, maybe other tipple or two as well. And maybe they've got a red nose from it, but I just think it looks pretty cool. Again, it just adds some more variation to the skin and really makes them stand out. And I think that's a pretty cool tabletop miniature and we didn't use any advanced techniques at all there so building on top of the the base layers that was was done with the contrast style paints I just think works really really well well I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial or guide to how I painted my own dwarf ranges for my army I appreciate that a lot of people won't have these miniature sculpts they're not in production anymore and I don't think they'll be coming back either they'll be bringing back other sculpts that they've already shown us I also think that the techniques I've used here, should you wish to replicate them or work with pretty much any dwarf miniature that's out there on the market, they are pretty standardised, carrying axes most of the time with, with a bit of chain mail here and there and a little bit of clothing. The format is what the format is. So I don't think my tutorial would change much at all if it was a, a different sculpt or even by a, a different manufacturer. So let me know what you think. Um, I've had quite a lot of fun painting this little chap here and his, his nine other friends so i finished my first unit for this army with this tutorial um, and painted a whole unit of 10 rangers and i think they're pretty fun if you have enjoyed the video come and let me know in the comments like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already the channel does have a really nice friendly discord if you wanted to pop over there and, and talk in more detail than you can in the comments everyone is welcome lots of warhammer the old world chatter but i cover lots of other game systems as well so more than welcome to come over and join us I've got quite a few more dwarf related Warhammer the Old World videos in the pipeline as we lead up to the release whenever that <laughs> happens to be and, and maybe after the release as well as I paint more and more of my own army. I will of course be covering many other factions as well and have done so already so if you're new to the channel do go and check out the other videos but I also want to thank my patrons for their support already and if you like to support the channel further that is an excellent way of doing it there's a link in the video description for that along with all my affiliate links and the discord links etc etc but thanks very much for watching take care and I'll catch you soon